Thank you. At the outset, I want to recognise my colleagues here, Senator Blaney, who has had a deep commitment to Northern Ireland, uh, Senator McGahan, who has equally pointed out the things that he sees needs to be done, uh, Vincent Martin, Senator Martin's point about representation at Europe for Northern Ireland, I think that would be a massive step forward by the Republic to actually look for a Northern representative, albeit that that representative would have to be elected to a constituency in the South. I think it would be an amazing step forward. And I can't speak without mentioning Senator Black. Her work in Northern Ireland is incredible, and you're to be commended for that. Last Saturday evening, I spent the evening in the Raven Club in Belfast. Uh, as a play about uh, David Irvine. Uh, if ever we needed a David Irvine, we need one now. Northern Ireland is in free fall. And I have to say tonight, I have to recognise two things. First and foremost, our Department of Foreign Affairs people who work in Northern Ireland, who do an incredible job that nobody sees them out banging a drum about. They just do their work and get on with it. And what they do, they need to be commended for. And I have to say, Michal Martin's work as Minister for Foreign Affairs, since uh, his appointment as Minister for Foreign Affairs, has changed the environment that I experience when I go to Northern Ireland. Ireland, uh, and I want to commend him for that. I mix mainly with members of the unionist community when I go up there, and by and large, they're just like you and me and anybody else. They want a peaceful life. They want a peaceful coexistence. They want to see their uh, assembly up and running. They are deeply concerned about the way things are going, and. I hate to say it, but people are saying maybe it's time we looked at the Good Friday Agreement again and the veto that Senator Martin was talking about needs to be examined and to see where we go. It is just wrong that the tail is currently wagging the dog and that really needs to stop. On the legacy legislation, it's no secret in this House that I'm a veteran myself. I'm a veteran of two uh, military organisations, the Defence Forces of the Republic and the Royal Irish Rangers. And I can tell you as a veteran, and the veterans I know who served in the British Forces, none of them have an, appet an appetite for shielding murderers. None of them have an appetite for shielding those who did wrong. Those who did wrong must be brought before the courts. The families that suffered as a result of those that did wrong, they need their day in court. And I don't just say this here. I've given a speech to the UDR Association in Northern Ireland where I addressed the issue of collusion. And I'm not afraid to address the issue of collusion with veterans in the north of Ireland. It was a dirty war. Nobody had clean hands coming out of it. Nobody. And what we need to do is to confront those issues. We need to be honest with one another. We talk about the Good Friday Agreement, and God knows Senator Black has been talking about it for the last 10 years now, or 9 years since we first met. We got the Good Friday Agreement over the line, and we all stopped and clapped ourselves on the back, and we said, we're all living in harmony now. It's great you can drive north and south. There's no border checks. There's nothing and everybody is happy. If we're being totally honest about it, we didn't work hard enough at it. We did not bring the communities, particularly the unionist communities in Northern Ireland, we did not bring them forward as much as we should have. And when I say we, I include the leadership of the unionist community. The nationalists educated themselves. The nationalists brought forward education programs and they raised the expectation levels of their communities. Sadly, some of the unionist leadership did not do that. And uh, I think we have to understand and try and understand why that happened. What I, what, I, what I like about here today is I haven't heard anybody stand up here and bang the drum and say, to hell with them all, uh, it's our way or the highway. The, Border poll, I'm a Democrat. I know that the unionist community, some of them, a very small group, would not be happy with a 50% plus one. But we're Democrats. 
And if that's the outcome, that's the outcome. But if we want to have a border poll, the first thing we should do, and I'm asking everybody here to do it, and particularly my colleagues in Sinn Féin, greater engagement, meeting with people, talking to people, let them know there's nothing to be afraid of. Do you know one of the questions I was asked in Northern Ireland after the speech I gave on collusion was, what about our land? I said, what, you, what are you talking about? And they said, well, the land that was given to us when we were planted. Another guy asked me, will we be interned in the event of a united Ireland? These are genuine fears by people. <clears throat> Albeit that to you and me, that may seem absolutely ridiculous, but they are genuine fears. I know I've gone over time, Car here, look, so I leave it at that. Minister, I really want to compliment our Department of Foreign Affairs and drive the Tarnished forward. We are doing a good job at trying to build bridges. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Senator.